the animal kingdom or kingdom animalia as it's biologically known is the largest kingdom in terms of its diversity in species this kingdom includes organisms having cells without cell walls as well as those that are heterotrophic multicellular and eukaryotic most of these animals can move around on their own human beings are included in this kingdom in this lesson you will learn how the animal kingdom is classified by the end of this lesson you will be able to explain the classification of the animal kingdom name and classify the invertebrates into different phyla and name and describe the five classes of vertebrates all the animals are classified on the basis of level of body organization that is the cellular or the tissue level symmetry type of body cavity called coelom presence or absence of segmentation and the presence or absence of a backbone the animal kingdom called animalia is classified into two sub kingdoms invertebrata and vertebrata the sub phylum invertebrata is classified into porifera coelenterata platyhymenthes nematoda annelida arthropoda mollusca and echinodermata invertebrates are characterized by the following features absence of a notochord and absence of a vertebral column porifera get their name from two words pori meaning holes and fera meaning bearing the phylum porifera includes cycon spongilla and euplectella they show minimal level of tissue grade organization though they are multicellular they are commonly called sponges sponges are non motile and are generally found in an aquatic habitat they are covered with a hard skeleton made up of silica or spongin fibers sponges have pores all over their body these pores lead to a canal system that helps in circulating the water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen Cylinterates get their name from two Greek words, koilos meaning hollow and enteron meaning intestine. The phylum Cylinterata includes hydra, obelia, corals and sea anemone. Cylinterates live in an aquatic habitat which may be fresh and salt water. Corals belong to this group and live in colonies while hydra live in solitude. Their bodies are radially symmetrical meaning that all the halves of the body have the same design. Their bodies have outer and inner layers which enclose a central cavity called gastrovascular cavity. In hydra, locomotion occurs with the help of finger-like processes called tentacles. Platyhelminths get their name from two Greek words: 
platy meaning flat and helminths meaning worms. The phylum platyhelminths includes tapeworm and liver fluke. Platyhelminths are either free living or parasitic. Free living animals include planaria and parasitic animals include liver flukes. Their bodies are dorsoventrally flat and ribbon like, and they are hence called flatworms. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical, meaning that the left and the right halves of the bodies have the same design. Their bodies have three layers of cells that form differentiated tissue. This is why they are called triploblastic animals. Flat worms have no body cavity, hence called acylomates. They lack respiratory and circulatory systems. Nematoda get their name from two Greek words, nema, which means thread, and ode, which means like. The phylum Nematoda includes Ascaris, Enterobius, and Vucararia. Nematodes can be free living or parasitic. Parasitic worms in humans are round worms and pinworms in the intestine of humans. Filarial worms in lymph and limbs cause elephantitis. Their bodies are long and cylindrical, showing bilateral symmetry. Nematodes are triploblastic. Their body cavity is pseudocelome. They also lack respiratory and circulatory systems. Annelida get their name from the Latin word annalis, which means little ring. The phylum Annelida includes earthworms and leeches. Annelida are found in a variety of habitats fresh water, salt water, as well as on land. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical. The organs of Annelida are differentiated in a segmental fashion, and the segments are lined from head to tail. Annelida are triploblastic animals. Annelida have a true body cavity called coelom. Annelids are characterized by the presence of a circulatory system. Arthropoda means joint legs. This phylum gets its name from the Greek words arthron, meaning joint, and podus, which means foot. The phylum arthropoda includes honeybees, spiders, prawns, and centipedes. Arthropoda is the largest phylum with 800,000 different kinds of insects. 80% of the animal kingdom is included within this phylum. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented. Arthropoda are triploblastic animals with a true coelom. 
These insects breathe through their trachea. Their circulatory system is open, so the blood does not flow through blood vessels. The coelomic cavity is filled with blood. The name mollusca is derived from Latin. It means thin shelled and soft. Phylum mollusca includes chitin, mussel, snail, and octopus. Mollusks are aquatic in habitat. Their bodies are soft and comprise head, visceral mass and foot. Locomotion in mollusks is by means of a muscular foot. Their bodies are enclosed in a hard, calcareous shell. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical and less segmented. Mollusks are triploblastic animals with a reduced coelomic cavity. Water mollusks breathe through gills, while land mollusks have lungs and their circulatory systems are open. Excretion in the mollusca phylum is carried out by kidney-like organs. Echinodermata are spiny skinned organisms and get their name from the Greek word echinos, meaning protective spines, and derma, meaning skin. The phylum Echinodermata includes starfish, sea cucumbers, and sea urchins. Echinoderms are exclusively free-living and they are marine animals. The skeletons of echinoderms are made of hard calcium carbonate. Echinoderms are radially symmetrical. Their bodies have three layers called triploblastic and they have a true coelomic cavity. Their bodies have tube-like extensions called tube feet, which help in locomotion and food collection. Protochordata belong to the phylum chordata and are primitive chordates. They include balanoglossus, Herdomania and Amphioxus. Protochordates are marine animals. Their bodies are bilaterally symmetrical. They are triploblastic and have true coelomes. Protochordates show a new feature of body design namely, notochord, at least at some stages during their lives. The notochord is a long, rod-like support that runs all along the back of the animal, separating the nervous tissue from the gut. However, notochord remains associated with their life cycle only during their early stage of development. Notochord provides a place for muscles to be attached for ease of movement. Subphylum chordata or vertebrata is classified into different classes based on bilateral symmetry, notochord, dorsal nerve cord, paired gill pouches, triploblastic, and coelomate. Vertebrates are grouped into five classes, namely Pisces, 
amphibia, reptilia, aves, and mammalia. Let's take a look at each of these classes. Pisces includes all types of fishes. Fishes are cold-blooded animals and aquatic in habitat. Fishes have a spindle-shaped body that is covered with scales. Fishes breathe through gills and their hearts are two-chambered. Fishes reproduce by laying eggs. Some fishes have skeletons made entirely of cartilage, such as sharks, and others have a bony skeleton, such as seahorses and flying fish. Amphibians include salamanders, frogs, and toads. Amphibians are cold-blooded animals. They are the first in the phylum vertebrates to have four limbs, each with five digits. Hence they are called tetrapods. Amphibians are seen both on land and in the water. All amphibians have mucus glands on their skin and they do not have scales. Amphibians breathe through gills or lungs and their hearts are three-chambered. Amphibians reproduce by laying eggs. Reptilia includes lizards, chameleons, flying lizards, snakes, crocodiles and turtles. Reptilia are cold-blooded animals and are terrestrial in habitat. They have four limbs with five fingers or toes and hence they are called pentadactyl tetrapods. Reptiles have a scaly skin which is resistant to drying out. Reptiles breathe through their lungs. Their hearts are three-chambered, with the exception of crocodiles, which have four-chambered hearts. Reptiles are also egg-laying animals, and unlike amphibians, they lay their eggs on land. All birds like sparrows, penguins and eagles fall in the Aves category. Do you think having wings make an animal a bird? Bats and houseflies have wings, but they are not birds. So animals are classified as birds only if they have feathers. Their forelimbs are modified into wings with feathers and bear three clawless digits and their hind limbs are strong and are developed for walking. Birds are warm-blooded animals and are arboreal in habitat. Birds breathe through their lungs and have four-chambered hearts. Aves are also egg-laying animals. Mammalia includes bears, camels, bats, dolphins, kangaroos, and humans. All mammals are warm-blooded animals. Their skins are covered with hair, sweat glands, and oil glands that regulate body temperature therefore allowing them to live in diverse habitats. For example, 
Polar bears live in very cold areas. Camels live in hot areas. And dolphins live in the ocean. Mammals have milk producing glands called mammary glands to nourish their young ones. Mammals breathe through their lungs and their hearts are four chambered. Mammals give birth to young ones through different modes. Mammals like platypus lay eggs. Mammals like kangaroos give birth to underdeveloped young ones that are carried in their mother's abdominal pouch. Mammals like humans, elephants and lions produce live offspring.